Warning. Censorship. Warning. Censorship. But it seems like you, like you have uh, the churches singled out. Uh, they have an opportunity to, to gather if they want to eat, if they want to drink, but they can't, oper they, they can't gather if they want to they worship. Regardless of what they believe in, I don't care about that, but you should be able to at least have the same rights that a bar or a restaurant has, at least in my opinion. If restaurants are open, uh, ski hills are open, and um, it, uh, gyms are open, like my gym that I go to, it's packed. Uh, the Grouse Mountain is packed. So it's not fair. Drea Humphrey here with Rebel News. My second day in a row in front of the Vancouver Law Courts. I have been reporting on the petition that was brought forward by the Justice Centre for Constitutional Freedoms. That is a matter of freedom of religion. Three churches are challenging the health orders for the right to open, as well as a matter of peaceful assembly, which is the right to peacefully protest. That's taking place in front of the courthouse. And behind me here, we have a perfect example of the right to peacefully gather an assembly in protest. What's happening here is unlike yesterday when two different pr protests ended up being told they were allowed to be here in the same place at the same time. Uh, one was the protest regarding the pipeline arrest that took place in Vancouver here. And then the other was what I already spoke to you about regarding the petition. The two groups came together and they actually worked it out. There was a little bit of friction at first and then there was a moment of solidarity that was quite beautiful where they shared the mic, they shared why they were there and even some of the protesters for the pipeline actually received prayer as well from one of the pastors that were here today. So you can check out our full coverage on that uh, protest and what's happening with the case at rebelnews.com. But today it's kind of a different story. Uh, before we got here there was apparently a little bit of pushing, a little bit of shoving and the two sides to seem to be more divided. Actually, Actually, there's police dividing them in the center so I figured it would be a good time since we're not on social media we're here in person to talk to each other about each other's points of view uh, we'll ask the pipeline protesters what they think about uh, the what the other people are processing for and vice versa let's have a look all right, Roxanne, it's good to talk to somebody to get a better understanding about what's going on. We have two protests going on. Tell us a little bit about why you're here. So why I'm here is um, to support Stacy. Uh, my husband is Will George and we've been working to stop the Trans Mountain Pipeline and protect our salmon and the things that have sustained us for many generations. Um, I'm really disheartened by the decision today um, to sentence Stacy to jail for 90 days because there are certain protocols in place with COVID that say if they're facing anywhere less than um, nine months to find other ways to go about sentencing. So I'm just really disheartened heartened by um, that and their decision and what Stacy was doing on the mountain was supporting youth, was supporting elders, was supporting people. So he wasn't doing anything malicious. He was there just with his ceremonial um, tools to help uplift the people. So we're still being prosecuted for prayer, essentially, with this decision today. Hi guys, how are you? Hi. Just asking questions if you want to raise awareness about what the cause is. Uh, well, I feel uncomfortable as a white person talking to, uh, taking the microphone, so I prefer to let somebody, somebody talk. Alfred. Alfred, would you like to talk? No? Don't want to help raise awareness to why you're here? Did you want to speak on, about what the other protesters are here for? This is quite awkward. How about you? Would you like to help raise awareness to why you guys are here? Well, there must be something about me, my face, my voice. I'm not sure that makes me too scary to talk to. Uh, we're not getting much answers. It doesn't seem like there's a spokesperson. There was one lady who was willing to speak, but because of the color of her skin, she didn't feel like she had the right to do so. So instead, we'll see if there's anybody walking by who's willing to share their opinion about what is taking place inside of the law courts right now.
the matter of three Fraser Valley churches that have been open in contrast to public health orders, but with a COVID-19 safety plan in place and with no cases of COVID being linked to them, uh, have come forward to ask for their right to remain open. So what's your thoughts on that? Well, you know, um, I go to the gym and I go to Grouse and they're open. I'm not religious, but I think that um, uh, they should be heard too. You know, if we're allowed to go to the gym and we're allowed to go to Gross Mountain, um, you know, churches should also uh, be allowed, providing they follow the, the protocols and, and that kind of stuff, you know, and, and if there's a problem, then they should be shut down. Well, I think that the, uh, the government doesn't oversee or oversee the rights of the citizens. If they want to gather and they want to worship, regardless, regardless of who or what they, they worship, I think that opportunity should exist for them. And I don't think that uh, the government should have the rights to uh, overrule the people and their right to, to worship. So uh, I, I know it's all about social distancing and everything, but at the same time, uh, it's a place of worship. If they, uh, you know, take strict precautions and everything about it so that uh, everyone's being seated at a distance or something like that, then it's going to be it's going to be really good for them because uh, they should uh, feel like they have the right to worship and they can go to churches because uh, I don't think it's a good idea of them being closed right now. Yes, coronavirus is real, but our God is also real. And Jesus Christ is the light of the world and coronavirus is from the darkness. So why afraid of the darkness? Um, and besides, we, we respect the government, but also one day we will give account to the Lord how we fight for the Lord Jesus. We are doing it not to be stubborn, not to be brag, but we are doing it because we love Jesus. It is our conviction. So I believe that um, this is the time for the church to express their love to other people. We are essential. If they want to kill themselves, they can go to church. I think so. And yours? Same with her, I guess. Yeah. So you guys, uh, do you go into the mall or any of the other places that are open? Yeah. So do you view that as killing yourself or? Um, no, but we're wearing masks and everything. But in church, there's a lot of people and they have to like sit next to each other, so. Okay, so the three churches that are asking for the right, they have been limiting at 50 people and they have much more space than that. They do social distancing, they disinfect, and uh, the vast majority of, wearing, of them are wearing masks. Does that change your opinion at all? If they will like keep all of the like their social distance and everything, I think it will be okay. I understand their frustration and difficulty with it, but just like everyone else, we want to keep every as many people safe as possible. And everyone's struggling right now, but eventually they will be all better and all good. So I would say just wait it out, as unfortunate as it is, but that's all we have to do right now. Yeah, we've been told that a lot, almost a year over the times, the different ways to wait it out. Uh, I think what's a little unique with churches and places of religion is since November they've been shut down, but restaurants, malls, Costco's, uh, you know, a restaurant in Port Moody was linked to 300 cases, just one of it. So what's your take on those being allowed to be open, but uh, a church where you can sit six feet away from the next people isn't allowed to be open? Yeah, I see the unfairness of it, but at the same time, those are also essential that people get their groceries or other products from there as well. Whereas a church, you can also do that at home. You can meditate, you can worship at home as well. And hopefully that helps you until the churches are open again. I think it's really, um, to me, it's ironic. You have an opportunity to go to a liquor store throughout this whole thing if you want to and that's an opportunity. Um, the bars are open, the restaurants are open. Granted, they change the, uh, the amount of people that are in, but it seems like you, like you have uh, the churches singled out. Uh, they have an opportunity to, to gather if they want to eat, if they want to drink, but they can't, oper they, they can't gather if they want to want to worship. Regardless of what they believe in, I don't care about that, but you should be able to at least have the same rights that a bar or a restaurant has, at least in my opinion. If restaurants are open, uh, ski hills are open and um, it, uh, gyms are open, like my gym that I go to is packed.
Uh, the Grouse Mountain is packed, so it's not fair. We have to open the church. I have a grandson, he said, why grandma? I cannot see my, my church mate now. It's been one year. He said, I hate coronavirus, but you know, grandma, isn't it you said Jesus Christ is greater that is in me than coronavirus that is in the world? Grandma, I followed everything that you said, washing hands, taking shower, sleep in time, eat food. But the best thing is Jesus Christ. So I have a very strong immune system, he said. We have to live. We cannot just stop everything and just like stay at home. We have to live. So it's okay that they're like going out and everything. So that's my opinion. I'm here with uh Marty Moore from the Justice Center of Constitutional Freedoms and Paul Jaffe, who has been arguing on the case on behalf of the churches that want to be open and the matter of peaceful assembly. Now, can you fill us in what took place inside today? Well, uh, Paul gave some excellent arguments, uh, arguing that these religious services, uh, the ban on them is unconstitutional for it bans really the full gamut of your fundamental freedoms. That's freedom of expression, that's freedom of conscience and religion, the freedom to peacefully assemble. Uh, there's been some uh, recoiling of the government on the issue of protests. They've said that you can gather outdoor for a protest as long as it's on an issue of public controversy. But if you gather outside for a religious service, that's still banned. And so there's certainly some uh, concerns also under Section 15 of the Charter which prevent uh, unequal treatment. And so uh, those arguments have been made and now uh, uh, the Justice Centre has stood down on its initial arguments. Paul's done those. Uh, the government is responding and so the court will be hearing those arguments now. Oh, really? So do you think we'll get an answer today or is it still going to carry on till tomorrow? It'll carry on until tomorrow. Uh uh, Mr. Morley, who is speaking for the Crown, will probably go uh, at least until the, the midday break tomorrow. And if we're really lucky, um, we'll be able to uh, respond with some reply argument in the afternoon and uh, everything going well. We might finish the hearing tomorrow. I doubt very much that the judge would rule from the bench. Normally these kinds of cases get reserved for a while, but you never know, it could happen. Well, there's been a colorful group outside. We've got two different protests happening, and it, I think it's so interesting that you guys are in there uh, with a case that really affects both of them, even though they're here for different reasons. It's a beautiful thing to see. This institution is so hugely important uh, to allow for the kinds of things we're seeing here, this freedom of expression, peaceful assembly. These folks, uh, there's a myriad of different causes that have been here this week. Yeah. It's a beautiful thing to see. Uh, it reminds us that we live in a democracy. Well, another moment in history in Vancouver. There was a mix of everything, mix of what people are standing for, but I found it very interesting that everything does relate to the case, the petition that has been brought forward by the Justice Center for Constitutional Freedoms. We'll be back here again tomorrow to hear what should be possibly the last day of the trial and we hope you will see us there too don't forget to subscribe at rebelnews.com so that you don't lose touch with us if you like seeing the other side of the story and you know seeing things like this that just pop up and you want to keep in touch with us make sure you head to rebelnewsplus.com there you can get all of our content including exclusive stuff that you can't find on youtube so again head to rebelnewsplus.com we appreciate your support